Hello! In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the SurfCE base translation function to adjust for small or large differences in the change of your base or network correction source while you're collecting GPS data. So I've already set up a base and it's broadcasting corrections. Let's go and store a control point on our first day of survey. We'll go to survey and then store points. This is going to be control point one. Just store it as point number 101. My HI is correct. Let's take an average. We'll accept that average. Let's check out our job. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to store the other four corners of this section and then I'll be back tomorrow to check in again. Okay, for, we're back on our job for our second day. Let's check in on our control point. Go to Survey, Stake Points. I've got my rod leveled and a bipod set up. Let's stake point number 101, which is our control point. And you'll see, for whatever reason, we're off a couple of hundreds and a couple of thousands in the easting, and our elevation is blown by about a tenth of a foot. What I'd like to do, since I'm in a local system, and um, I'm at a local system at ground, is I don't want to occupy all my control points to zero out this elevation error. Luckily, in Surf CE, there's a really easy way to do it with base translation. If you go to Equipment, and then localization and GPS, there's a base translation checkbox at the top. If you check that, click on OK, let's add a control point to our grid here. We could add multiple control points, but I think typically one is enough if the ground mark is solid. Click on Add. We're going to pick the point that we're occupying. In this case, I'm on point 101, which is CP1. And then let's take an average. I'm occupying that point right now. Click on the green check mark. I'll accept these average results. And you'll see that we're going to make a slight change in the latitude, longitude, and height of our base. To look at these changes, we can click on the green check mark. We're going to store a file. I'm going to store day two because this is my second day on this job. And click on the green check mark. Let's go back and stake that control point. And if we've done everything properly, we're going to hit it within the resolution of the GPS receiver. Now one of the interesting things we can do with base translation is we can set our base at an autonomous location, not even drop a hub on the ground on the first day. Do our first day survey. We're in a ground system. We don't care about state plane coordinates or anything else. Then on every subsequent day, we can just set up our base someplace close, or maybe not close, to where we were the first day. We can occupy a control point, and then we can make the GPS receiver read what we'd like it to read at whatever location. So every day we're going to set the base up and do a read GPS. We're going to get an autonomous position on the base. Then we're going to immediately check in on a control point and make the rover read what we want. We can do all of this without changing our localization. So this is an extremely powerful tool that 
some people might use every day if they're occupying on multiple days the same location. Other people might use this in a network environment where you typically see moderate changes in elevation over time. So you go out in the morning, you're dead on, you set up a job. In the afternoon, you check in and you're off a tenth. Well, you can zero that tenth out using base translation. So hopefully this has helped you understand base translation. I'll see you in the next video. If you think that you might like this kind of content, there's a subscribe button down on the bottom. If you check on that, and you can highlight the bell too, every time I post a new video, which isn't very often, you'll be alerted to the fact that there might be something interesting. Thanks again. Have a great survey day.